Hey, this is a match once again. What about two other videos of the paid requests? This time from Mr. Block World. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for the legend of Billy Jean from 1985, give or take, which is directed by Matthew Robbins, who that name I recognize. He will later be directing that film, Batteries Die Included, about the little UFO things helping the tenants of this building fix it up their place, all that stuff. Now, this film stars Helen Slater, who would be Supergirl. Has she done Supergirl by this point? She might have. But, you know, I liked her as an actress. Her brother is played by Christian Slater, which I'm a fan of. Gleam in the Cube. Where's the Blu-ray of that? A broken Arrow, Hard Rain. I'm on Cuffs. I do like Christian Slater quite a bit. So their sister and brother, they're just trying to enjoy their time on Slater's scooter. And one thing leads to know these goons are messing with Helen Slater, so Christian Slater throws milkshake at them. They get chased. They think everything's fine. These goons find them, beat them Slater up a bit, steal his scooter. He wants it back. They try to talk to a cop like Peter Coyote. Good character actor. He's been a lot of stuff. He was in Sphere with Dustin Hoffman, among the other movies. Uh, Yearly Smith, the voice of Lisa Simpson. She was also in Match and More Drive. She's in here as one of their friends. Anyway, they try to figure out what's going on. Trigger Slayer's found beaten up. They go find the, the kid and his dad. His dad goes, fine, I'll pay ya. Let me come up up here a bit. So the guy then propositions Helen Slater. Listen, I'll pay you a little bit, but the rest of it, I want your ass. She's like, screw that. Slater gets a gun, warns him, wounds the guy on the shoulder because he's a creep. They run out. A story's made up about them. Those two, Yearly Smith, another friend, they go on the run. They hide in this rich place. And the story develops from there. It's a movie that you could say is a feminist movie from back in the day. That's a movie that may not be the most realistic movie. But wish fulfillment. You In a weird way where you are out with your friends or your brother whoever. And bad things happen, but you're able to stand up for yourself, stand up for your rights, showcase your individuality, which promotes uh, a bit of a, not a cult, but a bit of a reach with the audience out there. Where at one point she has this video made after she's cut her hair, because she watched Joan of Arc, inspired by her. So she cuts her hair and tells about how their stories made up about us. Fair is fair. We want what's ours. We didn't do what they said they do. We were... Uh, they were in the wrong. We just want this money to pay for the scooter. That's it. Fair is fair. We're not asking for much. And apparently a lot of other people are very much entranced by this. They're wanting to be just like her. They're also cutting her hair like her. Now granted, would so many people look at this one video and get immediately emboldened by her? I don't know. Maybe if it was a series of videos and it caught on. Like maybe they saw one, they scoff it off. They see two or three, they go, okay, what's this about? Then maybe they do like three, four, five, six. Okay, hmm, maybe there's something to her. But it seems like everything's ratchets up so quickly that it seems like something maybe would take months to do happens like within a couple days to a point that the 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 guy that tried to attack her, as Peter Coyote says it, you won't pay her what she's owed, but you don't sell her picture. 
and more like trying to buy stuff about her, pictures of her, t-shirts with her logo or with her catchphrase on it. Now Helen Slater, like I said, I do like her. She definitely, I definitely buy her toughness. She doesn't seem like a glamour girl or a broken nail dead weight. Uh, Trisha Slater, he doesn't have a whole lot to do. Kind of just along for the ride. I mean, he's part of the inciting incidents, but afterward he's kind of just, again, hanging around. At one point, it's a toy gun, points at a cop, which even Slater gets pissed at him. Like, you know what? He might have known that was a fake gun and could have killed you. What are you doing? He's pretty much there to either shoot or get shot, like, later on. That's pretty much what Trisha Slater's there for. Uh, Keith Gordon from Christine, he's in the film. Because at one point they hide off, uh, they hide out in this, which was a bit off to me that they would just pitch some random rich place and just break in. Does it seem like that'd be very, very risky, but I guess, hey, why not? And they just start eating the food. And so there's someone in the house watching them on security cameras. And that's the thing, like, if people break into your home and the first thought you have is, I don't know where this... It looks like if Jerry Garcia was a werewolf, that's what it looks like. Because, you know, when people break into my home, my first thought is to wear a mask and steer them. But it is for Keith Gordon. And I guess he's just bored. And sure, I'll help you. You know what? You should film yourself saying these things. In fact, you know what? I'll go with you. You need a hostage, right? Now, it doesn't really lead to anything as in... Helen Slater and Keith Gordon, they don't really become an item. They don't really become a girlfriend, boyfriend. Some would say that's fine because it's not typical, it's not predictable on that front, it's not a trope. But at the same time, it's kind of like Keith Gordon just kind of thrown in there. Uh, but doesn't really get to have a whole lot to do in terms of the story. I just, other than... Okay, you're a hostage. His dad's played by Dean Stockwell, who's going to pay. Which even which, the thing is though, that's not really what they want. So wouldn't that make the situation worse for them, not better? And it's great to see Keith Gordon in there. I don't think he really has a whole lot to do acting wise, compared to Christine. Hell, even back to school, I thought he had a bit more to do with the story than, than this. But I liked him as an actor. Dean Stockwell, I, I love. May he rest in peace. Love him in Quantum Leap with Scott Bakula. He's wasted. He doesn't really have much to do during this whole thing. He appears at a couple scenes with Peter Coyote. I don't even remember any scenes between him and Keith Gordon as father and son, now that I think about it. But, you know, the movie goes on, and there's a point where there's going to be a meeting in the mall, but then the, the guy, the I'll call him asshole dad, tries to trick her. Even Peter Coyote, the cop, gets pissed off about this. What are you doing? She runs. She's able to escape. Decent soundtrack. And that chasing, you have a, a rebel yell. I say, go, go, go. So you got some Billy Idol in there. Not Billy Idol. Who is... I can't believe I can't remember his name. Is it Billy Idol? I'm bad with names. I apologize. <laughs> Give me a minute to look it up. I apologize. But the, I know the song is a rebel yell. But the, the big song is Pat Benatar's Invincible. Which I guess apparently... I don't know if this is true... But I heard that the longest time this didn't get much of a release on home video, like DVD, Blu-ray, because Pat Benatar would be against it, because she said it was the worst film ever. It's not that bad of a film. Far from it. 
Maybe Pat Benatar doesn't watch a lot of movies, but it's not nearly the worst. I want to say I love the film, because I thought at times it was a little bit slow, it was a little bit boring, but I thought the cast worked well, it has a decent soundtrack. I do like that song, Invincible. Like I said, Rebel Yell, I do like. Like I said, I, to see all this cast of, of people, like Yearly Smith and Peter Coyote, and I think they do their jobs well. It is Billy Idol. Okay, I just wanted to double check. Yeah, I was right. Second guessing myself. And, you know, there's some good moments. I mean, when she reveals herself with the cut hair, I'm like, she looks good with her hair cut, too. I almost want to say she looks better with the cut hair. She definitely has that strong image that, like that image you see people being entranced by. Like I said, I wish there was a bit more of this, like, Maybe a bit more videos, a bit more that gets people gun ho about this. It seems like they, they do it real quick. And then the movie's kind of in a weird way spinning its wheels to get to the next bit where they don't really know what to do. They're just trying to, to maintain... At one point, Helen Slater and Chief Gordon have an argument, and they gotta make a run for it, and Helen Slater gets help from another random person who also cut their hair, because more and more people throughout the, the country are hearing her story. Uh, there's a bit, almost seems random, where this kid's being abused, and she walks in, and the guy's like, what do you want? And then he sees like a bunch of kids around him, Maybe he saw too many Children of the Corn movies. Although, the, by this point, maybe he saw the first Children of the Corn movie, and he's like, that's why he says, you want us some soda? You're her, aren't you? Granted, in real life, he'd probably be trying to attack her, smack her, smack all the kids, get a gun. In reality, that's what would happen. I'm going to skull fuck you, you know, I'm going to... You have to die, you know. Do a Will Smith. But, you know, within the, the movie, it, it works. It may not be how it would be realistically, but... Again, it's trying to be escapism. It's trying to be... A bit of a girl power type of movie. It's hard in a weird way. It's in the right place. And it doesn't feel like a man-hating movie either. That's another thing. If this was done today, it'd be like, all oh, the men are terrible and all the men... It's like, no. Like, her brother's a good guy. Keith Gordon's a good guy. Peter Coyote's a good cop. And now all the women are great. Like, Yearly Smith's mom keeps slapping her. And there's a point where she slaps Yearly Smith. She's had it. So she gets, like, scissors. And then she starts trying to her hair like everybody else does. The ending of the film does leave a lot of questions, because, spoiler alert, <clears throat> by the end of it, the third act, there's this meeting that's going to happen, Christian Slater pretends to be her, he gets wounded, she freaks out, she goes to find asshole dad, confronts him, who's selling all this merchandise, making money off her, and she confronts him. And the guy pretty much spills the beans because he's an idiot. He could keep lying and say, I don't know what you're talking about. You're making this stuff up, blah, blah, blah. But he just pretty much outright admits what he did. Or at least doesn't deny it. Knees him in the balls. The place burns. The people realize they've been inadvertently helping this guy by buying the merch and helping this guy profit over this. So they throw their stuff away. Nowadays, they keep and sell on eBay. <laughs> and then the cops just let her go. I'm sitting there going, So you're telling me none of these kids are arrested? Not Yuli Smith, 
for aiding and abetting a fugitive or not her for wouldn't it be some other crime she'd be arrested for if not this like I mean you st you know, you were still with this guy who shot this guy in the arm or some type of vandalism like something that she'd be arrested for or some of the other kids would be arrested for Chief Gordon so he's not with them anymore so I guess hey I did my business okay time to go so I guess on one hand I can appreciate that they didn't go with the typical love story because not every film needs a love story but it's just felt I don't even think he got like a goodbye goodbye thanks for the help see you later or any moments between him and his dad, Dean Stockwell, like, there's really nothing of an ending to his character other than he just kind of watches her walk away as part of the group. Uh, Yearly Smith, what about her and her mom? Or is her mom going to change her ways? Or is Yearly Smith going to come in and the mom's going to slap her? you know, triple or quadruple fold. All we did is that Helen Slater and Christian Slater, they moved to Colorado, wherever the hell they moved to. I forget where. They moved somewhere else where there's snow. And Christian Slater looks at something that's kind of like a scooter, I think like a snowmobile, as if he's thinking about it. Then the movie ends. So it does leave a bit of questions at the end. Like, the cops would not just let her go. Um, her or Slater, someone else would have been arrested. Pierre Coyote's character as a cop probably would have been fired. Uh, Chief Gordon, again, his character, like... Other than maybe him wanting some excitement and wanting to help... I guess that's all you really get out of it. There's really no summation. There's no climax in a way for his character. But yeah, I mean, I don't hate the film, though. Like I said, I do like some bits of the cast. There are moments that made me chuckle, like the fact they did walkie-talkies. It's, it's G.I. Joe walkie-talkies. So I appreciate that. Because I wonder if you could just do that nowadays. I want to get some Ninja Turtle walkie talk. Like, just put that in the movie. Probably not. You probably have to pay for a license. So I like the idea that maybe they pay for the license to use G.I. Joe just to get these walkie talkies. <laughs> Dean Stockwell, maybe at this time he wasn't looked at as, uh, as how I look at him. Because, I mean, this is before, I mean, before he was even in Beverly Hills Top 2. I think he was in Dune the year before, the David Lynch film. Of course, many years before Quantum Leap and, and stuff. But I guess it's just in retrospect, would have been nice to see him a bit more. Also, Caroline Williams is in this. Before she did Texas Chainsaw Master 2. As Woman in Pickup Truck. Because there's a bit that almost seems random where the kids are driving and this guy in a pickup truck sees who they are and decides to shoot them down. I guess as a concerned citizen, I don't even remember there was a reward out for them, dead or alive, I don't remember. And Caroline Williams just along in the pickup truck with this guy. I guess for her, fair isn't fair and... She wasn't trying her hair, so I guess she didn't believe in that shit. She was like, fuck that shit. I'm not cutting my hair. But, I'm sure this is a movie that a lot of women looked at and felt a bit of empowerment. And at least this is a lot easier to swallow than how they would do it nowadays. Because it wasn't about men are bad is more fair is fair. And I can agree to that. So...
But, I mean, if you took the same film, it would be more of a... extreme sexism political to the 10th power and it shows you handle a little bit more tat even unrealistically a little bit more tat in the 80s so overall I didn't mind the film for what it was so and Pat Benatar again this is not the worst film ever I could, name, I could show you a couple hundred movies that are way worse than The Legend of Billie Jean Anyway, but with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.